Welcome, welcome, welcome to Careers in Finance, brought to you by Valuation Masterclass Bootcamp. Get $100 off with these coupon codes live and student live at valuationmasterclass.com slash bootcamp or just follow that QR code. The next Valuation Masterclass Bootcamp starts on September 4th. I'll see you there. My name is Andrew Stotts, and I want to welcome you to Careers in Finance. Today, we got a special session. I'm really looking forward to meeting with one of my prior students from the Valuation Masterclass Bootcamp, who has really uh, built a career for herself. And I just want to tell you a, a, a story about Christiana before I bring her on. She's just waiting to come on. And the story is... When she was, when she graduated from the boot camp, she was applying for a job and she sent me a picture of her computer screen with all of these notes all around it. And she said, I'm ready for the interview. And it really impressed me and it made me realize that she is a person who really puts a lot of importance on preparation. And that goes a long way. So Hopefully she's got, uh, she's, hopefully she's here and we can get her in. Let's see. We may be having a little technical difficulty, but let's see. There she is. Christiana, how are you? Hello, Andrew. Thank you for inviting me today. I'm so excited to see you again. I'm so excited to share my insights with uh, our uh, guests and mm. uh, looking forward to discussing further yeah. Careers in finance with you. I and I wanted to um highlight that uh <clears throat> a lot of good memories. I, I always felt like you know you brought a lot of positive energy to the evaluation masterclass boot camp. But I also think that the the class that you were in was pretty special. You had boot camp, you were in boot camp number three. There was 43 students that attended, and only 30 of them graduated. That's about a 70% pass rate. And you graduated in April of 2022. If I remember correctly now she uh christiana has some technical difficulties so i'll continue on and then she'll come back on but some of the people that were in that group was denny from indonesia rashid lawal uh rakshit also shetty from uh he's studying in uh in uh sweden i believe annapurna we've talked about and adi roju uh and uh Boon Mi, also from both of them from Nigeria. We also had Taxapon, who I recently went on her Facebook and onto her community. And we had Druvika uh, uh, Pamar, and she's my neighbor in my complex right here. So it was great getting her on. And uh, I'm just going through some of the people that were in the Valuation Masterclass that was, uh, boot camp. Technical. Yep. Problem. Just give me one second. No problem. So I'll continue. There was some other people. Jack Sheehan was in your group. Uh, Luz, Lusa okay. was, was in your group. And a bunch of people that I remember very fondly from Valuation Masterclass Boot Camp number three. So maybe we'll kick this off by asking you to tell us about your job. Where First, where are you? And second, tell us about your job and what you're doing now. Well, I'm um, situated in Cyprus and uh, I'm working at MUFG Investor Services, which is a fund administration company. It is uh, part of MUFG, um, the International Bank, uh, Mitsubishi UFG Financial Group, which has uh, 3.2 trillion in assets and uh, 14 locations around the world. So this is huge. It's an international company. Mm. And uh, MUFG does um, the fund administration. It has many divisions. Here we have the fund administration. And um, uh, it's not only that. In general, uh, they do also asset servicing, banking and um, liquidity, corporate and regulatory services. It's a very broad aspect of this company. And mm. um, specifically, my job here, uh, I am uh, a fund administrator. 
mm -hmm. from Junior Associate in Fund Administration. And uh, what we do, we calculate the net asset value of the funds for and those our are the clients. funds of the firm or of other uh, other companies that have funds? It's other companies and other uh, clients that have funds. We are They outsource their administrative part to us. We're doing the admin sign on their behalf. Mm. So our clients are uh, like investment managers. Uh, they are institutional investors. And we're dealing with uh, funds of funds, hedge funds, infrastructure, mutual funds, private debt, private equity, and real assets. I am on the traditional assets. My, my team, client operations, works on the traditional assets. Mm. And uh, traditional, by saying traditional, uh, they are funds which have uh, equities, bonds, um, forwards, futures, and options, not too many complicated and complex uh, strategies. It, they are simple funds. Yep, yep. And um, except from that, uh, other than the calculation of the net asset value, I'm dealing with other projects like uh, audits and fund distributions. So we need to answer auditors' queries. We need to investigate further any discrepancies and get back to them as soon as possible. Mm. And it's actually very interesting. I like it. And uh, I'm very happy with my role. And um, I'm looking forward to grow within the company because it's only been a year that I work for this company. Yep. And previously, I was in the banking sector. I was working at a bank. And so what I needed to doing, What were you doing at the bank before you, and, how, and tell us how you went from the bank to get this job. So before getting to the bank, I had experience in audit and accounting for five years. Mm. Then I jumped into the banking sector for many years. And there uh, I was in customer service. I, I, I was every day communicating with clients. Uh, emails and uh, working um, under a lot of things together. So my skills developed mm. throughout the years. I created a profile. I built it myself, let's say. Mm. So all this uh, experience I previously had, like with the accounting audit, uh, audit and the banking sector with clients, built a solid background for me for my current job yeah. because in order to be in this industry, in the, especially in the funds industry, you need to be detail oriented. You have to have critical thinking. You have to investigate, to be able to investigate things in a in more depth, mm. not on the surface. And uh, that is why I like my job because it matches my mentality. And uh, I'm so grateful to be part of MUFG. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell us about how you got the job. I mean, I remember when you were getting prepared for the interviews and all of that. Tell us yeah, more actually, about Actually, you were in my journey. Yes, it was at that time, yes, when I was uh, being interviewed. Um, so I was looking for, I decided, I said, this is my passion. I want to get into this industry uh, because my studies anyway, my background is on banking, investment and finance. My bachelor's degree also and my master's degree are on this uh, industry. So I was so de decisive. I, I mean, nothing. I couldn't see anything else. That, that's it. I made my decision. That's it. So I was looking for the perfect opportunity. I couldn't find anything for two years. And then this opportunity presented, uh, I found it on LinkedIn, actually. I mean, it was out of the blue. Some, yeah, I mean, it was incredible because uh, what they were asking, it was exactly what I was looking for. This job was the perfect match for me because everyone knows what, what you like. I mean, what's your passion? You need to find what you really love to do. Yep. For me, that was it. I knew what I wanted. So I saw the opportunity. 
And I said, I will try. I couldn't believe it in the beginning. I, I mean, it was so unbelievable because and it, even the culture, I mean, it was extraordinary how they described things. Mm. It was so structured and good and uh, I couldn't believe it. So anyway, I, I applied for the job. Then uh, it was on, it was when, as soon as they came in Cyprus. So it was the right timing also for me. Mm. I was one of the, of the first employees at MUFG in Cyprus, among uh, other uh, few people. So uh, I applied for the job. Then I got invited after maybe two weeks and it was very fast. The procedure was fast. And uh, it was like a dream came true. I couldn't believe it seriously. I cannot explain the feeling how it was because I really wanted it so much. I was so passionate about it. I mean, and, I remember uh, that you had done even some study of the company and you had lots of notes of, you know, so you like you were, and I think that there's a lesson out there for everybody that's listening and, 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 you know, is that you, you first thing you describe is that you found something and you said, I want this. And you set it as absolute goal number one. And I think that that comes across when you interview with a company. If you go into an interview with a company and you're like, well, you know, maybe blah, 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 that's the way they're going to treat you. And I always exactly. tell people that you don't have a choice until they make you an offer. So your number one thing is to get them, make you an offer. But I just think, okay, there's the, the commitment to say, this is what I want. And the second thing was your preparation. I think without your preparation, it would have been harder, still could have been possible. Of course. Most people don't do that kind of, of preparation. Course. I I, I was so determined, Andrew. I mean, I couldn't lose this opportunity. This is once in a lifetime for me because I come from a small town in Cyprus mm. and in my town, the opportunities are so little. So I had to expand my horizon. I had to go out of my comfort zone, let's say. Uh, I currently commute to another town for this job. So I took my chance, but I have no mm. regrets, definitely, because I'm currently working on a hybrid model. So I work from home sometimes. There is a mm. balance and uh, even the culture exceeded my expectations. This company values the employees. I've never seen this yeah. before. Uh, yeah. I mean, in a way, okay, all companies must value their employees, but this company especially, it, it goes further. It goes beyond. It's not like, I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm. Uh, you can feel you have the voice inside the company. Uh, everyone is equal and you feel like mm. home. I mean, it's incredible to feel this way at your job environment. It's not, it's not it's easy amazing. to create yeah. too. It takes intention for a management team to create an environment like that. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure that it must have been a lot of hard work to reach this kind of level. It's not from one day to mm. another. And uh, the values they have in the company, and uh, it's mm. amazing. I mean, I wish every company could uh, <laughs> take like uh, a role yeah. model. <laughs> so tell us more about this fund administration and valuation and what you're doing there. Um, I'm sure you have some cases of most of the time pretty straightforward valuations and NAV calculations. And then maybe you have some, you know, weird or strange ones or harder ones. Maybe you can tell us just a little bit about, you know, what you're doing. Yeah, what we do, um, we need to we need to find the discrepancies, let's say, um, all the um, exceptions they come out in the system. Mm that sometimes they don't match uh, with uh, the reports. So we need to investigate further. Is that logical? For example, if you see like um, an income and you can see it's negative, I mean, you have to have the critical thinking to think this is an income, it shouldn't be mm. negative. For example, uh, things like that uh, in... Uh, and when um, the tolerance, for example, it shouldn't be breaking for the net asset value. If something, if a trade comes up, 
and uh, you need to uh, calculate and see the movement of the net asset value what's what's causing this fx movement what's what's the what's causing to our nav it shouldn't cause big uh, differences mm. i mean there is a tolerance for each uh, net asset value so if this tolerance is exceeded you need to investigate further and justify why is this uh, exceeding the tolerance, the allowed tolerance. So this is one part what we do in, on a daily basis. And uh, we also uh, do, we have projects. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, we have, um, we do audits and fund distributions. Uh, for example, uh, auditors may come to us to ask uh, clarifications uh, on reports because we are preparing the reports for mm -hmm. them. Each report and they combine all the reports to prepare the financial statements for the funds. So what the auditors do, they are preparing the fund financial statements and uh, we give them the reports to prepare these so they can come out to the correct uh, decision. And for the, for the funds, if someone has a, a $100 million or a $500 million fund and they have someone doing it, it sounds like you basically do everything and what they've got to focus on is picking the stocks or allocating the assets and not messing that part up. Exactly. This is what we do. And we encourage uh, our clients to trust us they already do because they see uh, our mm. work. Uh, it's uh, it, uh, what we do is really good, right. and uh, we're accountable. Yeah, uh, where we have to meet deadlines, and because this is about signing the financial statements, it's uh, it's these things are very important. So you have to be accountable for your clients, and uh, that is why I believe. Uh, MUFG is growing fast, mm. and uh, yeah. What, what kind of uh, what and kind of funds would be the type that would deal with you guys? Is it over a certain um, asset, you know, uh, AUM, or is it a certain country or a certain type of asset class? Like, what are the typical type of person that would come to you to do this service? Uh, we have um, funds uh, in uh, Cayman mm -hmm. Islands and in yep. Dublin. This is uh, what our funds are where our funds are right. based. Okay, uh, I mean in Cyprus. This is what we yep. do in Cyprus because there are different locations. There is a, a location in Halifax. Um, and now they open a new office in Vancouver. I mean, uh, so different uh, different areas are handling with different mm. funds. In Cyprus, currently, we have these funds, the Cayman and the Dublin-based. Right. And then... Yeah. And, and uh, they are traditional funds, but we also have other teams which are uh, on hedge funds, private equity funds or funds. But me, uh, personally, I am on the traditional funds. And what... Uh... What kind of, um, you know, without giving away any, you know, uh, you know, important information, what have been some of the situations that you've seen that have caused you to, you know, make, make it difficult, whether that's like something happens with a stock or an M&A deal goes, or there's some fraud and the stock collapses. And now you've got to figure out how do we, you know, make sure that we get the right value in here for this, or maybe you could tell us a story. To be honest, uh, for the year I'm here, I haven't experienced something like mm -hmm. that uh, because uh, I mean I'm not. I mean, in uh, in uh, my role is not inside uh, higher levels. Yep. I mean, I'm I'm in the front. I mean, in the first edge. Let's say I'm not very deep into the right. things to invest for investigate further mm. things like that. So I wouldn't be able to answer this question. Okay. Uh, I haven't got any story. I mean, I'm not aware of anything like this. <laughs> but tell us, um, for, for the people that are listening or watching, um, you know, what are the skills that are necessary? Like, 
like I, I talk about the difference between a job of a sell side analyst or someone wants to be an investment banker, someone wants to be a salesperson. Tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, what, what skills are necessary and, you know, what type of person is this right for? Well, for this kind of job, because uh, finance in general, okay, but for fund administration, it's very specific. If you want to grow and if you like this this sector, which is very, I find it very interesting, you have to have attention to detail. You have to be, you have an, you have to have an analytical mind, critical thinking. You have to love what mm -hmm. you do. You have to find it interesting. This is important. And you have to like to investigate things further, not just from the surface. You have to go deeper. I mean, why? If something looks doesn't look good, then it probably it's mm. not. You will have to investigate further. And uh, also, if you, you have to like learning and growing, it's important because on this uh, environment, uh, things are changing very fast and you have to keep track of uh, your knowledge. So uh, these are some things that someone has to have. Um, also, the background, it helps. I mean, it helps. But if you're passionate about something, you always have uh, uh, the ability to learn new mm. things. Yes, and this should not stop you. I mean, even if your background is not in finance. So I'm going to just take a moment and welcome the people that are in and also tell everybody that if you've got questions, feel free to ask those questions. And uh, and I think the next segment, let's talk a little bit about your experience in the Valuation Masterclass Boot Camp. That would be fun. So let's just uh, go through. We have Amit. Good to see you. Of course, Momen is with us. And... Ashwin, who's one of our Valuation Masterclass graduates. We also have uh, Sitin Alte says hello. And of course, Momen, being the sweet, kind guy that he is, he told us that we both look good. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> thank you, Momen. And uh, Sarah, too, says hello. And also one of my neighbors and friends here, uh, Janaran Dana, and good to see you. I'm good. And I'm a new, also a graduate of the Valuation Masterclass. And uh, Zishan, also a graduate and in India. And an old friend of mine, Ginny, says, hello, long time no see. Indeed, indeed. Um, I saw that uh, uh, Zishan says, I'm sensing this is financial reporting compliance kind of work, like deciding the fair value for the purposes of closing financial statement. Is that what you describe it or how would you describe it? No, there is a different department mm. for the compliance. Uh, we mostly have to, we're dealing mostly with the auditors. We are like fund accountants, mm. fund administrators. Right. So focus yeah. on making sure that they got the right NAV for that fund. You don't yeah. ever want to mess that up. Yeah, um, it's very important. And moment, of course, asking how important is it to find a job that we enjoy, like we both did. Back, basically, both of you after the boot camp found great jobs. <laughs> how important is it to you? I mean, did you ever work in a job where you weren't really that satisfied? Actually, uh, no, <laughs> because um, what I do, I like to be present of what I do. I mean, to be present mm. in everything you do, it's very important to keep you happy. Even in my previous yeah. job, uh, my clients were so sorry I was leaving, my colleagues also the same. I mean, uh, it is very important to feel, your, to be yourself in uh, every job. If you're yeah. not, maybe it's not for you, or maybe it's something you need to develop on you. I mean, maybe it depends how you see it. For me, uh, I'm very grateful that my previous job and my other jobs, I was always felt very satisfied. And I'm grateful because they taught me uh, my skills. For example, my communication skills, these skills mm -hmm. it, uh, were built in the bank. I didn't know I had these skills. 
and uh, also IT skills because I had to help clients with online banking in, in my previous job. I didn't know I had also these skills. So all these transferable skills that are coming from your background or from any kind of job, it's good for you to make you feel satisfied that you did well and you were happy at your current situation. I mean, from every job, you always get something. You, you don't lose. I mean, you create your own environment of the way how you react, how many things you want to learn. Mm. And it's good always to keep a positive mindset. Yeah. Actually, it's great advice. And I, I think I've pretty much gone through my life a lot like you, where I've enjoyed, you know, what I'm doing. And if I didn't enjoy it, eventually I'd just leave and go try something else. But um, I just was I'm checking on the list from the boot camp number three. And I remember there was the other lady from Cyprus named Xenia. And uh, Xenia. That, yeah, Xenia. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh let's see, we've got some others. So uh Simran says hello and Isaac says hello. So welcome. Feel free to ask any questions if you've got any. Uh Euler uh is a graduate of the valuation masterclass boot camp and he is in kenya so i think one of our first students from kenya and simran says do you have some advice for the people in their early 20s okay what do you think about yes that? i have an advice uh i would suggest find what you like find your passion build on that and start your own company this is what i'm suggesting at your early 20s. Wow. <laughs> That's a challenge. That's a yes, challenge. Yes, it is. Okay. Hold on one second. Ladies and gentlemen, feel free to ask any questions. And I just want to highlight, uh, we're going to be back in a moment with Christiana. And, and when we do, she's going to talk a little bit about her experience in the Valuation Masterclass Bootcamp. Uh, but before we do that, let's just uh, thank our sponsor. This Careers and Finance is brought to you by Valuation Masterclass Bootcamp. You can get an extra $100 off with these coupon codes. That's live or student live if you're a student. Uh, and just go to valuationmasterclass.com slash bootcamp or scan the QR code. Our next Valuation Masterclass Bootcamp starts on Monday, September 4th. And we're excited. We've got students from seven different countries coming in. And they're starting to, to come into the group. And we're welcoming them. And I'm looking forward to it. So maybe you could talk a little bit about your... Uh, Maybe you could share, you know, how, how you found the, the valuation masterclass boot camp. What was your like initial experience or your concerns or whatever? And then, you know, tell us a little bit about your journey. Yes. Uh, as I said previously, I was looking into these things. So when I saw, I think it was on LinkedIn. I don't really remember where I saw it. No, mm -hmm. actually I received, you know, I received an email uh from the because, cfa uh, society yes 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 exactly now i remember yes so i received an email to participate for a scholarship for this program and I, again it came out of the blue because as i said this that was something i was looking into mm -hmm. so uh i immediately i didn't second uh guess my decision yep. i applied and uh, there was going to be an interview about this uh, to and I was really feeling nervous because I haven't done an interview like this before. It was your interview, and then it was my jobs interview. Mm -hmm. I mean, this way on camera and be live. So I was getting out of my comfort zone again, but I took the chance, and uh, then I got accepted. Thank you for that, for accepting me yeah. in the program. And uh, it exceeded my expectations. Uh, I'm not easily satisfied. Don't <laughs> don't uh, un uh, underestimate me because I say I like that. Right. I'm very difficult to please. Mm. So yes. So if I say something, I liked it because it is a perfect match for me. For every person, it will be different. Okay. Mm. Uh, for me, it was what I was looking for. So it exceeded my ex expectations. And what I have learned in the valuation master master class. So what we did, uh, we learned uh, what drives a company, what is the driver of a company, uh, what constraints a company can have mm -hmm. to develop, 
because what you want to do is to value the, um, the price of the company, the correct price. Mm. Again, we're talking about valuation, but in this case, it's for a company. So you don't want to miss this. Uh, so you have to calculate all the risks that are, are, are around this company, the driver, what drives this company, the constraints, the maybe the environment around the company, uh, the management. It's many factors which you don't see. I mean, if you don't think about them, you don't realize you don't realize how many factors exist around the valuing a company. I mean, you just see like a company valuation, but this valuation, what does it consist of? How did we come to this result? So it's many factors. This is what I have learned in the valuation master yeah. uh, class to to be open minded. It has broadened my my mind in a more um, a broader perspective mm. to see things from another perspective and uh, it also showed me how to apply uh, various valuation methods this is like the discounted cash flow which yeah. we used for our equity reports in the end we had a presentation with uh, our own company mm. which we valued and we presented it in a powerpoint format and we actually talked live. Mm. Again, you are getting out of your comfort zone by knowing how to present things because it is very important to also, I haven't mentioned that, it is important to communicate well, to get out of your comfort zone. It's number one. I mean, it helps yeah. to get things right. Yes, in every work, communication skills are very important. So if you want, to build communication skills. This is something you can invest in also, other than the finance, build your communication skills. Great. Nice. And uh, we also learn, yeah, we also learn how to forecast profit and loss and balance sheet forecast, which uh, again, were very interesting. I mean, you, you always see all, the, all those reports and uh, you don't know how they come how they were uh, prepared. So with Andrew in the valuation masterclass, we saw the logic behind all this. And uh, that was really exciting. And I was so good. I feel I was, I was, it was so great. I mean, to be able to go through this program. Yes. Mm. And thank you for that, for giving me this opportunity. Really, it was very uh, beneficial for me. And I believe the company you did was Salesforce. Yes, yes, I chose it. I think yes. Um, in yes. fact, I'm just looking at this right here. Would you mind if I shared it into the um, into the comments? No, I don't mind okay. at all. You Let's can share, share it because that, that's uh, it's a, it's a great one. Um, so much has changed in the valuation masterclass bootcamp since the time that you were here. For instance, we we we're now we used to say you know pick any company you want to value, but now we're having people work in teams because I realize that some people are really good at Excel, but you know others aren't. Some people are really good exploring on the internet, but others aren't. And so what we try to do now is get people to share resources. They each do their own individual report on a company, but they share resources and help each other. And so that's one big change that we've made. Um, the content has been completely redone. Chris and I went through and Chris really helped me, but we've completely redone the content and we built it around checklists. So, and we've done a lot more work on the aspect of, you know, understanding how to sort forecast sales. And we also do, I think I mentioned before about the um, feedback Fridays where we really help people see, okay, this is the assignment for this week. We dropped the companies. We were doing like three companies like Clorox and a couple of others. We drop those and we really focus on one company that I demonstrate and then the company that, you know, that you're working on. So, so many changes going on. We do have some questions coming in. So keep your questions coming. Uh, I can see that Amit asks, what's the relevant IT skills we need to prepare for making a career in finance and in particular a career, you know, that you're doing in, in fund administration? Well, uh, for me, the most uh, uh, beneficial IT skills you need, it's Excel skills, uh, because we are using uh, macros. You need, and uh, 
you need to be able may, to use maybe shortcuts to be faster. Uh, about the the systems that we use, this is something you can learn. Mm. I, I didn't know the systems before. I mean, they are easy to use. I have learned it on the job. Yep. Um, so you have to be like, um, not to be afraid to use the computer. I mean, you have to be a little bit literate, especially in Excel. Yep. Yeah. Um, we got another one from um, Simran who says, your story is inspirational. As you mentioned that you belong from a small town and I'm glad that you get the opportunity. I'd like to know how do you prepare for the interview? What steps have you taken to get the opportunity? Thank you, Simran, for your comment. I am glad you liked my story. And uh, because as I, I really wanted this job, I mean, I have decided it. I, I'm going to get this job. So a good thing to do before going for an interview is uh, to search for the company. Uh, what is this company doing? Maybe you know the company, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. If you don't, you go to their website. You have, is this something relevant to you? Is this something you would like to work? Um, so I went through the website of the company. I found it very interesting. I learned some things I didn't know. And uh, another thing, what I did, uh, I checked the reviews of previous employees. This is also something you can do. Mm because uh, not many people think of that, yep. to check uh, um, past employees' reviews. And uh, because it's not only, you're not only going to give to the company, you will get from the company. Yep. You don't only want to give, you also want to get back for you. Mm. So is this something, for example, is this, an, because you don't know the company, is this an environment, uh, something I, I would match, it will be a match for me. So you can see this from previous employees, uh, how they treated them or if they were satisfied or what are the pros and what are the cons. Uh, this is another point I did before my interview. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also watched on YouTube uh, the videos how to get ready for an interview on my sector. And it helped me tremendously mm -hmm. because I, I practiced questions that uh, might have come to the interview and I was really prepared for that. So this is another tip you can do. It will help you. And the last thing, what I did, because I couldn't remember all things I investigated and I searched for, as Andrew mentioned before, I kept notes around my laptop. <laughs> yeah. I, <clears throat> so I, have, I have the picture of that that you share with me, but I couldn't find it. I got to go search for date. But uh, yeah. that that's great advice. Um, let's let's continue on. I know Ashwin says, "What kind of personality would be needed for the job you're currently working in? Would it be difficult for someone who isn't really outspoken, spoken, or an introvert to break into a job relating to equity research evaluation? How can they become more outspoken?" Hmm. Well, uh, all kind of personalities are good. I mean, you develop yourself. We don't have to get stuck of, I'm like this, I can't do this. If if you want something, you just go for it and you develop from there on. I mean, it's there is no specific, the main points I mentioned, like analytical thinking, critical thinking, this is okay on your, on your personality, perhaps. But like if you're outspoken or if you don't like this and you like that, this is something you will build in your career if you're given the opportunities, because for example, uh, in my company, um, there are many programs to develop professionally and personally. So you can participate in, in programs which ha will help you with your communication skills, mm. for example, or yes. So it is important to the company you will work for to have these uh, educational programs, which will help you to develop if you don't feel like you're missing on something. Mm. So this is not a constraint. This is this shouldn't stop you that you're not outspoken because you will grow. This is what, what you will do. You will grow, I mean, with the years, if you really want to grow, of course, and uh, get the chance to, to do what you really want. 
Yes. Yeah, you'll grow if you want to. And I think Ashwin, he came out of university, he got a job at a bank, but found out that it really wasn't right for him. And he joined the Valuation Masterclass boot camp. And then he went on to finish Valuation Masterclass professional. And he's been working, you know, with I've been guiding him on creating a little product that he's got. And uh, I still need to help him get that job. So that's my my challenge there with Ashwin and myself. We've been working on um, Kai Squared says, is a CFA certification or charter necessary? Uh, CFA, it's a very good credential to have in the finance industry, of course. Uh, if you want to, to develop uh, further in your career, and uh, I mean, it's not necessary. I wouldn't say it is 100% necessary, but it's something you do, you would do for yourself. I mean, to because your worth and your abilities uh, do not show if you have whether you have the CFA or not. There are many prestigious people who don't have the CFA. But again, uh, this is a personal uh, uh, personal thing for anyone if you feel like you want to have it or not. Right. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to, I want to wrap up in just a minute, but I want you to think about, um, the final question, which is about what advice would you give, you know, young people, but, you know, you've now had some good experience over your career, uh, at different companies. You've also had good training internally, externally. What would be, you know, the, the advice that you would give people, um, based upon your own experience? About their career in finance. Yeah. Um, uh, I would say, don't be afraid to take risks. Uh, don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone. Uh, always uh, what you think is correct at the moment you're thinking of it. Every decision you make at the at each moment you make in, it's a correct one. Mm. Don't doubt your decisions because uh, um, this is how you feel at the specific moment. For example, if you make a decision at specific time of your life to, to choose another job, for example, or to change your path, this is how you feel at the specific moment. It's, it's the correct decision. So you should not doubt this and you should take risks. <laughs> this is what I have to say. <laughs> That's great. I like it. Um, somebody, uh, S Simran says, can you show me the showpiece, which is right back in your shelf? I'm sorry for interpreting, uh, but it just grabbed my whole attention. Now, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I will show that a friend of mine went to a Warren Buffett uh, Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting, and he brought back this for me that he gave me, which is Warren Buffett riding down the road. <laughs> so that's what that is well i'm gonna wrap up here and say that i really first of all it's great to see you and i love your positive energy you brought it to the valuation masterclass boot camp you i know that you're bringing it to your job you brought it tonight and i think it's a great example focus in you know and, and one of the things i can say you've said a few times tonight is get out of your comfort zone and that is something that i think is a real if I was to, to put a title on today's discussion is all the good stuff comes from getting out of your comfort zone. And I think you're a good demonstration of that. So thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to, thank you, Andrew. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put up the, the display for just a minute and then, and then we'll end the show. And then I'll talk to you for a couple of minutes before we go. Thank you everyone for your questions. It was nice, uh, talking with you. Yes. Thank you all. Fantastic. All right. Well, amazing. That was a great edition of careers in finance. And Christiana is a bright light uh, for all of us and a guidance about how we can build a happy and successful career in finance. And that's really what this show is all about. You know, how do we, each of us, find the place for us in the world of finance that brings us joy and uh, 
Christiana's taught us about that with her own experience. I've experienced that in my career in finance, and I hope that everybody else is experiencing it too. Remember that Careers in Finance is brought to you by Valuation Masterclass Bootcamp, and you can get $100 extra off with these coupon codes that's live. And if you're a student, student live, check out the prices there, valuationmasterclass.com slash bootcamp or scan the QR code. I loved all the questions. It was great to hear from all of you guys and have a great evening. And I will see you in the next Careers in Finance.